It's great to have you. Yeah, great to be here, Jonathan. Likewise. <clears throat> um, so yeah. let's start. Innovation at the bottom of the pyramid. What's it all about? What is the biggest thing happening in innovation at the bottom of the pyramid today? Mm. Right. <laughs> I think there are uh, two things uh, worth noticing. So one is the, the role of uh, technology. And then the second one is the role of China. Um, so in terms of the role of the technology, you know, technology can be a divide that leads to greater inequality if the technology is only available to the to the wealthy and the developed countries. But then if you can make te technology, make a conscious effort to make technology available to the, to the developing, to the poorer uh, countries, that actually uh, provides an opportunity for these countries to leapfrog. And so for example, very recently I was at uh, Huawei. Huawei actually is very active in, in Africa at the moment. So you know, a lot of the operators, partners that they're working with are actually thinking about leapfrogging, leapfrogging from 2G directly to 4G and 4.5G. Right, so that's, a, that's, that's, that's because the technology is, is more available at the, at the moment, right? So for example, you know, Chinese companies are playing a great role in, in helping African countries to improve their um, power supply. And then because of the clean energy technology, because of the technology and more efficient uh, electricity transmission, you can actually do that in a more uh, eco-friendly eco way. So in a way, it helps uh, you know, the developing countries to to avoid many of the mistakes and this, the, the, the environmental consequences that, for example, China has experienced in its own, in its own development. So, so I think technology is definitely something that's really important uh, when you think about innovating at the bottom of the, of, of the pyramid. Then the other, uh, the other thing that's worth noticing is, uh, is China. Uh, so, you know, China has been playing a big role in Africa's development. China is uh, more now more open to actually thinking about new approaches uh, to supporting Africa's development. They are more open to connecting with the rest of the stakeholders and more open to multilateral approach. So, so you know, China's role in in innovating, bring China's own you know, uh, innovations and experience in poverty reduction in economic development uh, will be, I think, very important uh, going forward. Yeah. Well, what, what's the <clears throat> difference between the way China does innovation mm. at the bottom of the period and, say, you know, the U.S. or mm. Europe or Western, or is there any difference? <laughs> uh, so I think uh, maybe when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to that, I, I guess there are two things. Uh, uh, that are different. Uh, one is, uh, I think China is very good at uh, system system level uh, inno innovations, right? So if you think about China's own experience of lifting, you know, 600 million people out of poverty, it's a it's a it's a combined effort of uh, of uh, of government uh, and 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 social sectors and and private sectors. It's innovations at different at the policy level and at you know. Uh, R and Ds and business models. It's, it happens in all, all levels in a in a relatively coordinated way. So I think that's something that's actually pretty unique uh, from uh, from China, and that's something that can be uh, you know trans uh, in a way adapted and transferred uh, to 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 many of the other developing countries. Uh, so that's that's one. And then two is I think the innovating at the bottom of the pyramid for China is a. Uh, uh, it's a more recent uh, experience, uh, so the faith of this is going to work is is very different. I think so. For example, when I go to Africa, you know, I wouldn't feel like I'm descending onto a different uh, different planet, right? This is when I look at many of the African countries where they are. This is like, you know, I've I've. I've I've been here. I've been through this before, yeah. and uh, if uh, if if we can do it, if innovation, technology, and all this can happen in China, then at some point it can happen there. So there is a, I guess, uh, from China and the Chinese people who are working in Africa, there is a, a lot of us have a natural empathy <laughs> and and compassion that probably is different from the. Yeah, Maybe different from the Western. So, yes, so recently. Yeah. yeah, the faith is uh, the level of faith. I guess is different. Yeah. Well, what's the? <clears throat> I mean, as you talk to people, as you go through this work, what's the biggest sort of misperception that you 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 run into, or the thing that that uh, I want to say bugs you, but the thing that you <laughs> constantly have to explain to people about innovation? <laughs> right. Mm. So I think uh, one is a, uh, you know, one is a misconception that uh, poor people, because they're poor, they they have lower needs, 
and their needs are uh, less uh, sophisticated and, and technology doesn't matter for them. Uh, the, 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 my argument would be exactly because they are poor, their needs are actually more difficult to, to meet mm -hmm. and therefore it actually takes more creativity and more innovations and technology to actually meet their uh, meet their needs and serve these uh, these these poor you know uh, poor people right uh, so that's one and then the second one I guess is the disconnect between uh, business interests and the social impact mm -hmm. so that's the uh, two circles that is <laughs> very hard to actually uh, in a lot of people's perception it's very difficult to actually come together mm -hmm. but then when you think about the markets in in the developing countries, uh, actually, they can very well uh, come together, right? Yeah. So, for example, you know, the uh, uh, Techno, a uh, Chinese mobile brand, which is the number one mobile brand in, in Africa, so they do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, efforts to lower the cost, and at the same time, they innovate the features for the African markets. So availability of low-cost feature phones or smartphones from brands like Techno actually are playing a great role in mobile access and, and that will have implications, for example, on digital financial inclusion uh, for, for the African you know, po population. So, and then Techno is doing super well, right? They're selling you know, 100 million phones a year in, in Africa. So, so that there is a way when you think about these markets that business interests and social impact can come together and really support each other. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, that's great. Yeah. Um, so, what's the next big thing? <laughs> you know, at, you know, what are you expecting to be? You know, how how will this change? This picture change in the next couple of years? Yeah. So, uh, at the foundation, it's interesting. We are actually starting to do what we call a scenario planning mm -hmm. um, uh, process. We try to imagine what's going to be the big trends in you know 10 years or 5 years or 10 years from now mm -hmm. and what we should do differently so you know when we do the scenario planning one of the one of the things is actually china again <laughs> right yeah. and the, the role of uh, technology um, so so yeah so that's 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 actually something that's i think is is, is worth uh, watching out for for example you know biotech uh, oh. innovations yeah. right china is you know from the government to the private sector heavily investing in that so uh, you know in 5 to 10 years you could totally imagine china become uh, you know transitioning from an importer of uh, biotechnologies to a potential exporter collaborator to the world mm. on on biotechs and and having impact on on, on, on on global health. Yeah, so that's something to definitely. And yeah. agriculture as well, yes. Yeah. 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 Impressive. Mm. Wow, lots to look forward <laughs> to. So uh, last question, what's your favorite, what are you reading? <laughs> and what's your favorite book, beer, mm. or beach? <laughs> <laughs> or all three. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, so uh, at the moment I'm reading a, a interesting book called The uh, Religions of the, of the World. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and prior to that, I'm reading. I was reading the book, the uh, the, the the history. I think the, the history of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So when you put these two books together, it's, it's actually very interesting, right? Because the religions of the world, in a way, you know, I'm very moved by reading that because it it it, it talks it talks about it's, it basically talks about uh, you know you know people of different parts of the world actually uh, share the same 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 desire and feel the same similar pains and then how different religions you know using their own way you know providing the pathways right to provide to 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 guide people <laughs> to true to true right. to, to true joys right but then the pre-assumption of that is uh, you know one is that people are uh, immortal and two is uh, you know people are uh, 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 you know they have a hard they will have a hard time struggle to to find happiness mm. but then then the, the book about the few the future of tomorrow then talks about okay there are maybe science and technology can make you immortal and science and technology can using biotech ways to make you feel happy mm. etc so the pre-assumptions for some of the religions that have supported the human society you know the pre-assumptions may be falling apart in the mm. future years so and then that brings the question then you know what 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 spiritual guidance that people will need in future so anyway so those are very fascinating to to read yeah beer uh, I would recommend if you go to uh, Ethiopia to try the St. George, okay. <laughs> the local beer. I make sure I, whenever I travel, I, 
I try the, the local lo mm -hmm. local beer and the, the local beverages. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beach, yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, uh, Dar es Salaam <laughs> <laughs> in Tanzania, that's, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. The Tanzania blue, that's, mm -hmm. that's just not found anywhere in the world. Yeah. Three great recommendations. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, yeah, Jane. You're A welcome. Pleasure.